Yes, it is loading. Yeah, so question was this. So can you tell me what is this exactly? So this is the interview type question. So I got this question. Mm -hmm. So what would be the answer of this? <clears throat> so answer is for sure false. false. false yeah. my, my question is why it is false? What is your interpretation? So explain this. Is, um, is comparing two things. Okay. So what is there in the curly bracket? Mm -hmm. Maybe a function. Okay. See, I will write more. Const a is equals to empty. Can you write like this? Const b is equals to the empty bracket. Now instead of this, so if the this empty bracket is equals to a. Uh -huh. Also, this empty bracket is equals to B. You can write something like this. A triple uh -huh. equals B. Uh -huh. And it is giving me answer as false. So, what is your logic? So, this is a question I got in one of the interview. Uh -huh. Why it is false? So, think and tell me. Okay. Okay, I know the answer. But I want you to go through this process you need to analyze what is this what is this use gemini or chat gpt whenever you get any question where you can't get answer mm -hmm. i highly recommend use chat gpt or gemini 100 percent okay so this is the this is the homework i will mark it as homework okay so let's move ahead with the today's topic let's dimension units we have seen we have seen there are two types of units absolute unit and absolute units and what Relative. Relative units. What do you mean by absolute units? Uh, absolute means they are fixed. Fixed. Okay. So we cannot adjust. Correct. For example, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. For example, pixel. Pixel. Pixel okay. is an absolute unit. Correct. And relative is, a, can say, uh, it is adoptable uh, according to the uh, device. <laughs> On which uh, we are executing our uh, uh, means we are, we are executing our web page through the browser. Okay. Means uh, it is responsive. So you can, told act. you told the property of relative units. Okay. What is the relative unit? Uh, they are adaptable. They are responsive. Responsive. This is a property. This is a property of relative units how they work but i'm asking a definition of the relative units the way you said absolute units are fixed mm -hmm. what do you mean by relative units relative units are that units which are relative to someone yeah correct so this is the answer and relative to someone gives them ability to adjust according to the multiple aspects one of the aspect we have discussed width there are a lot of other aspects orientation device type right relative to something the units which are relative to something okay today's topic is a box model today's topic is what index.html we can say here i can create styles.css index.html style.css let's create this sorry here html box model and style.css right 
format the document can you see that so formatting is important right click format the document yes okay now in a body let's have main and to this main let me apply border one pixel solid rate so i told you this is the shorthand property notation shorthand attribute notation actually there are three attributes there are three css style attributes one is width border width border type border color but css3 allows you to write in a short shorthand manner hello am i audible hello yeah, yeah. Uh, just why is it breaking? Okay, so here if you see CSS three is allowing you to write three attributes in one single attribute. Mm -hmm. There are three attributes: border width, border type, and border color. Mm -hmm. This is called as CSS shorthand notation you can write three things okay. in a shorthand manner okay let's open this index.html yeah can you see just border we didn't give width and height let's give some width and height width you can say 300 pixel height 300 pixel Hello? yeah am i audible uh, yes or no hello hello yeah uh, just a minute huh? yes i'm switching to another network okay no problem Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes. The voice is breaking in between. Okay. Please, please continue. Yes. Now, if you see this main, we have given width and height. Now, if you inspect it, now you might be habitual of inspecting the things. Now here you will get element style, which means that if you select this particular element, you can apply styles over here. You can add or remove the styles. Mm -hmm. And if you scroll below at the bottom, can you see here, there is a box. Mm -hmm. There is what? Box. box. And that box is nothing but the today's topic. That box is nothing but the today's topic box okay. model so here uh, i mean the, in the element type you mm -hmm. can see the html and in the styles uh, section you mm -hmm. can see the css part, css right? part correct okay. so here whatever elements you can see if you click on the particular element that element would be getting selected over here you can write the style over here so okay. this this style you have written in the css Apart from this, if you want to add or remove, add something, you can write into the element style. But the selected element, you can, for testing purpose, in the browser itself, you mm -hmm. can add the styles over here. Okay. And these, these, these styles are written in your CSS file. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, we are going to see this later on. There is, can you see, user agent style sheet. So, this you have written. For the main, there are some properties which are built-in available. And that properties are given to you by browser. User agent stands for the engine in a browser, running engine in a browser. Browser engine, you can consider it as. So, for every element, browser also supplies some styles. You cannot change those. You can change those. 
you can change those how we will see later on but see these styles are given to given to the main tag by browser mm -hmm. these styles are given to the main tag by you and if you want to test in browser some styles you can write those styles over here there is a computed layout event listeners we'll see that computed so this is the topic we are we are going to see today under mm -hmm. the styles or under the computed you will see one box over here that part is nothing but what the box model is okay now let's go here in the main i can write hi how are you refresh it can you see hi how are you so if you see this is the main tag inside a main tag hi how are you is there mm -hmm. hi how are you is a content what is the hi how are you it is a content which is nothing but what this content 300 inside 300 by 300 pixel your content will reside right can you see the blue colored one the blue colored one is nothing but what the content whatever content that content can be another html whatever but that will reside in this box and that is nothing but in a blue color the now inner innermost inner part yes. yes now if you apply the padding mm -hmm. what i'm saying if you apply the padding it is around the content now what do you mean by this now if you go here i will add a 10 px padding 10 over here and i will apply <coughs> Ten over here. Can you see little mm. green things are appearing over there around the content? Ten over here and ten over here. Can you see now? If you see the mm. padding, what is the padding? It is the space around the content. When you say padding, what is that? It is the space around the content getting my point yes this is the interview type question senior people get confused over here tell me the difference between padding and margin so your answer should be like this as per the box model of css3 innermost part is called as content the space you apply around the content is padding now if there is any space can you see one px we have given in our css here we have given one px right this is the one px one px one px one px so the space around the padding is called as border you may increase that if you go here you may increase can you see the space is getting increased on the top can you see that border top so space around ma so space around padding is nothing but what border is well you can add space at the top at the left at the right at the bottom separately no problem so you select so this it is not the, the width of that border line which one this, uh, this border 10 you mentioned here, here. Okay. the space around the padding right correct so actually it is a different area or it is a width of that border line it's the width of the border line okay but it is around the padding around the right. padding so border always gets applied it it around the thickness padding. right we correct say thick thickness thick correct okay. but as per the box model it is not the thickness mm -hmm. it is the space you mm -hmm. you get the illusion that it is a width or it's a thickness mm -hmm. but technically it's the space around the padding mm -hmm. but you get the illusion that it's a thickness but whenever you drill down to the box model, box model says that it is the space around the padding. Mm -hmm. And you get illusion that it is a 
thickness. Now see, I will increase it. Can you see here? This is a 10 over here. If I add one thing, this is a 10 over here. This is what border is. This is what border is. And that's why you think, feel it as it's a thickness. But technically, it's what? space because you have given the border color red it is showing you in a red so we have seen what is content the space around the content is called as padding space around the padding is called as border now space around whole element or the border is called as margin you look like element is moving now if i if you go here let's give a margin left 100 you will feel that element has been shifted from here to here right mm -hmm. but technically this is not a shift you just have added the space see once again margin left 100 you will feel that element has been shifted by 100 pixels but technically what is this you have added extra space on the left hand side similarly you can add extra space on the top and actually your element is this much can you see and there is a space over there if you see element is there but to the towards the left hand side there is a little space mm -hmm. on the top there is little space little means what 100 pixels You got it or not? Yes, yes. Yeah. Now explain what is margin, what is padding, what is border. Initially, uh... Content uh, is the innermost part of the element. box model element. Mm -hmm. So uh, the space around the content is called border. Mm -hmm. uh, space, sorry, sorry, the space around the content is called padding. Mm -hmm. The space around the padding is called border. Space around the border is called margin. Mm -hmm. Cortex. Margin. Uh, margin, I told you, it is space around the border. Okay, space around the border. Correct. And this concept is called as? Box model. So whenever you heard the hear the word called as box model, you should you should getting to know this thing. So remember, so this is by default structure. Yes, this is a C structure of the CSS three. This is the default structure, and whenever I say apply a margin, you should be having an understanding of this. What do you mean by margin? Sometimes you will apply the border and border will not be getting appeared. So where exactly you need to debug? Sometimes you apply the margin and margin won't be getting applied. It means what, what is not exactly happening? People say that margin is shifting elements from left, from right, from Actually, it gives you illusion of shifting the element, but that is the wrong answer. You are not shifting element by 100 pixels. You are adding a space around the border, that is the margin. Actually, it is the white space you add. And it feels that element has been shifted by that much percent or that much pixel. Mm -hmm. White space around the border. 
करेक्ट दैट इज द मार्जिन बी वेरी श्योर यू अंडरस्टूड दिस थिंग गो है so uh, for each of this uh, area mm -hmm. of the box model we have certain attributes correct so for not certain it is a content content is a content yeah. we write in html yes okay then uh, for padding we have this padding properties correct we can say property na right ha ah, css property अवेलेबल Correct. Correct. In the CSS, you have a margin property, you have a border property, you have a padding property, mm -hmm. and padding comes with the variations: padding left, padding top, padding bottom, padding right. Same happens with the border left, border right. 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 If you go so, here. Yeah. So this, um, this we can uh, mean this bo box model. Model, model is. uh only means uh, we can apply this for the different uh, controls as well yeah a every element has these properties every html element has okay. a box model mm -hmm. okay fine clear yeah so make sure that whenever you whenever you say i am applying margin So, so people say that shift element by twelve pixel. You might get a user story also in your agile storyboard. That shift this element by thirty pixel. Then what you will apply? Padding or margin? Margin. Why? Because you tend to shift the element. Correct. and whenever you say there should be little space around the content of the element what do you apply padding, padding. around the content is always padding yes. element would be at the same position there won't be any white space around the element so you don't get any illusion you don't get any illusion that element is shifted but what will happen you will get a uh, Width and height around the content, right? Okay. That is what the padding. So, so you need to whenever you read the descriptions or the requirements, you need to be very much sure what shall I apply, padding or margin. Mm -hmm. correct yes so this is about box model if you have any questions go ahead and ask me can you uh, give some examples for examples let me now here draw a rectangle mm hmm the border is the rectangle right correct so this border is nothing but what this rectangle border is around the padding padding is around the content which means that if you want to draw a line around the content that would mm -hmm. be border that would be border yeah because border in so below this it is the element this border padding and the content and outside the border that is the margin right outside the border can you see even here even we have selected that mm -hmm. the reddish color is applied outside the element right mm -hmm. 
Now, if I select the padding, that is the inside the element. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you want to change something inside mm -hmm. the element, that is either border or padding. Okay. If you want to do something outside the element, see, see this. The area which is selected outside the element, that is margin. You can add... You can remember this in this way also. Remember this in? In, in this way as well. Yeah. But meaning it's same. It's the white space around what? If there is a white space around the element, that is margin for sure. White space around the content, which is nothing but the inside. Now this is the inside. Inside the element. That is padding. And this 300 by 300, it is the area of the element that you set by means of width and height. So from width, what? Area of element. element. So this is 300 by 300. What's that? Width and height is the area. 300 by 300. So technically every element on your screen is either rectangle or the square. If you see the round color button, a round button, that is also square or rectangle. If you see triangle, that is also a square or rectangle, a square itself. Inscribed, inscribed. So if you want to draw a circle on the screen, mm -hmm. so you will, so that would be inside this square. Yeah. Right, and you'll give the color to that much part, and you'll get round that... round button. But technically, whenever you apply width and height 300 by 300 pixel, there is no property called as radius over here. You cannot apply. There is no CSS3 property available called as radius. Width and height you need to apply. Correct? Yeah. Uh, width and height. Uh, I mean that uh, radius of that circle. Ha, then inscribed circle, the circle which is resident of the, this rectangle, uh, sc sorry, square. In that case, the circle will be the content area, right? Ha, content. But still, the remaining area, this, this, this will also content. So, as a circle, you will just draw something over here, draw a line. But your area would be the width and height only. And you can manage by means of code that area should be considered only in a circular fashion. That you need to code it. Mm -hmm. But whatever you see on the screen, it will have width and height. Either it becomes square or it becomes rectangle. Means this CSS always follow this box model. Model. Always box model. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is a heart component of CSS3. Whenever you want to learn the CSS3, what things you will do? You will not learn the properties mm -hmm. in the CSS3. What you will learn? You will learn the units, dimension units. You will learn the box model. Mm -hmm. You will learn how to apply the CSS. That's it. If you learn these many things and, and layouting, only four concepts are there in the CSS. Your dimension units, box model, applying the CSS and the layouting options. That's it. There is nothing else in the CSS. Okay. So this is highly important topic. If you have any question, go ahead and ask me. We can try with some examples. Okay. Let's do that. So here I can have a section and there is an input button. There are two buttons. Say add. This is one button, right? And subtract. Now I want I want to have a little gap between these two buttons. What shall I apply? Also, I want a little gap between this main and this section. Tell me how to do that. 
gap between two bottoms you can add a margin okay right okay yeah correct but why margin explain because uh, it is it is a space that you require between these two elements correct it is the outermost part correct in margin correct now same for the now and what was the second question i want i want a little distance between this main and this section Can you show first in the problem? See. You want the space between this? Now can you see add and sub are way attached to the square. Correct. I Correct. want a little gap between them. Yeah, there is. So again, margin. Okay, let us Bottom see. Bottom margin. Correct. So let's create a class or yes, presently we don't have too much elements. Let's not create a class. Bottom margin to the main or margin top to the section. 16 pixel refresh it. Can you see a little gap between these two? Little gap between these you two. You a top margin to the section. Okay. Correct. Or margin bottom to the main, but when you do margin bottom, what happens? For every every single element, you will get a bottom, bottom margin. Yeah. Right? Input here we can say margin left 10 pixel. Let me see some gap have been added. Um, please show me the code. Left margin, right? Okay. And spacing in between two buttons? You can write nth element. Nth. Nth child. Sorry, not it. Okay, nth child. Zero. Section. Inside section. Oh, okay. Section we have inside section. There is. Let's try to apply the border. You will get to know what's happening. One px. Solid red. Can you see only after this this element border is getting applied? Now I want to apply it to the second element. Can you see to this? Also, we can give some margin. Margin left is 16 pixel. So there won't be any margin after before this first one. But there would be margin after this second one. Mm -hmm. And then you can remove the border because we don't need to override built in border. Figure. So we have used over here combinators plus pseudo classes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So this is about the margin. Now, uh, yeah. Saying like if you apply the uh, bottom, uh, can you go to the HTML? Yeah, so here uh, you are attached to the section margin top. Margin top, if hmm. you uh, attach to the main bottom, mm -hmm. margin bottom, what will happen? So, whatever yeah. element you will add, you can, you can add one element and now see so how to decide this let me tell you yeah so you want the section to be far away from the main so section should have margin top because tomorrow if you remove that section mm -hmm. 
right tomorrow there is a requirement remove the section and add something that 16 px margin top also would be getting removed but if you apply margin bottom to the main and in our latest case if you remove the section that 16 px margin bottom to the main will remain as it is but that is that was not the requirement of the main that was the requirement of the section but still that margin is remaining over there and that will create a trouble in layouting the elements so by thinking in this way you need to decide to which element you will give a uh, margin or whatever required and that's how how do you take a call in this way in in future if i want to remove this section right all the things related to the section should be removed mm -hmm. right. and so that you cannot apply a margin you cannot apply a margin bottom to the main right. that's the logical reason otherwise it will work right now but that is not a maintainable way right. if you want to do it in a maintainable way you need to think in this dimension as well so whenever you want to select the element so like this shall i give it to the main or shall i add a margin top to the section or margin bottom to the main how do you take this call because if you apply margin bottom to the main it will work it will suffice your current need so this call has to be taken in such a way that if i manipulate one of the element that should not hamper the whole layouting system or the particular element so uh, here uh, one more question here you apply the m child correct input correct in the section mm -hmm. so can you directly apply it to the input instead of section then you need to write a class then you need to create a class same thing cls or you can say margin left 16 dot ml any class name and you can say margin left 16 16 px so if you comment this you need to write class over here class ml 16 correct mm -hmm. and impact is same but you created a class separate class yeah. and if when you now you, how do you take a call either writing either writing uh what's that pseudo class or writing a separate class how do you decide which way you will opt for how do you decide that Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Okay. What are the parameters of deciding either writing a pseudo class or creating a class in this way? You please tell me. You tell me, think and tell me. Pardon the question. So, either you write pseudo class like this, like 11, 12, 13, or you will write a separate class. How do you take this call? Means if you uh use a pseudo class in mm -hmm. that case it will be applied to the entire section no same effect is same so the yeah. margin left is getting applied to only this button in this case also and in this case also margin left would be getting applied to this button
right? But you have to add the uh, separate class to each element. Okay. Only one element. In yeah. a second case, only one element. That is line number 19. My question is that which way is appropriate? How do you decide? Okay, answer is reusability. Wherever, so this ML16 can be used at many places. Right? right? So it's a, it's a re reusable kind of thing. So, if you want to use this thing at a many places, if you want to use this at a many places, you will create a separate class. And if you want to just apply to one, one existing element, right, then you will find it by means of a query selector pseudo class. But uh, in case of yeah query selector that is fine like we uh, apply input and tab. Correct. But we can apply for the entire section as well. Ha! Huh, then then just remove that greater part, yeah. greater than part and input part. Yeah. Any question? So this is clear, right? So whenever we will learn the layouting, mm -hmm. you will get a lot of questions and that we will start soon. First, mm -hmm. positioning. First, we are going to see positioning, then float and then flex layout and grid layout. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll positioning. positioning float flex layout grid layout this is the things we will see next flex are so many places yes very important thing flex layout mm -hmm. okay fine yeah. then we'll meet in next session and we'll cover those things so, uh, what about the model? You will tell me. Even I am not sure about the model. Fine. So let me stop the recording.